Applying math and science in your welding endeavors helps in understanding and solving welding problems. The benefit of understanding why MIG wire melts is to see why a key variable like the distance from the gun tip to the workpiece called stick out must be kept in close control. We'll also dispel myths as to what controls this function. Understanding the magnitude of what variables cause changes in penetration will show why increasing voltage, for example, actually causes a decrease, not increase, in penetration. First, consider some things that do not cause the wire to melt. For example, the hot arc, the wire passing through the arc, arc radiation. The radiation may cause sunburns and worse, but it does not melt the wire. Then what are the variables that cause MIG wire to melt? Two factors cause a MIG wire to melt. The current passing through the small wire diameter causes it to get very hot as it leaves the gun tip on its way to the arc. This is called resistance heating. The second is the energy required to get electrons into and out of a solid surface as they pass through the arc. This is called the work function. With 150 to 200 amps passing through the small diameter MIG wire, it gets very hot. When the wire exits the MIG tip, it starts essentially at room temperature. But it can reach 500 degrees or more before getting to the arc. Exactly how hot it will get depends on the length of the wire sticking out of the gun tip. The length of the wire from the tip to the workpiece or stick out and the amount of current define how hot the end gets. The longer the stick out, the hotter it will get. The major cause of heating this wire tip to the temperature higher than 2500 degrees F, which is the melting point of steel, is the energy required to get the electrons into and out of a solid surface. To get the electrons into the wire takes quite a bit of energy. This is called the work function. The energy is expended at the wire or drop surface. It can be expressed as the voltage required. Note that when using electrode positive polarity, the electrons move from the workpiece to the wire. However, if using an electrode negative polarity, such as with some self-shielding flux cord wires, the energy needed is similar, but in this case, it is required to get the electrons to leave the wire surface. There are two terms needed to calculate wire melting rate measured in pounds of deposit per hour of arc time. The equation we'll use is from the American Welding Society's Welding Handbook. The first term represents the amount of energy required to get the electrons into, in this example, our electrode positive MIG welding wire. The more amps, the more energy is required, and it is calculated with a simple constant A that is dependent on the wire type and size. This constant is multiplied times amps. The second term is the resistance heating energy that determines how hot the wire tip is at the arc interface. This is expressed as another constant B multiplied by the wire stick out measured in inches times the amperage squared. Or you can say amps times amps. Constants for 035 inch diameter steel wire are A equals 0 0.017 and B equals 0 0.00014. Note the constant B has been modified to account for the fact that the equation was designed to use what is called electrode extension, which is the measure from the wire tip to the top of the arc. It is easier to measure from the tip to the plate, so a modification of constant B was made to compensate. What conclusions can be drawn examining this equation? One observation is the second term is very powerful since it multiplies amps twice. To maintain a current of 150 amps, the deposition rate, or wire feed speed, must increase from 3.7 pounds of wire per hour with a 3 8 inch stick out to 5.3 pounds per hour with a 7 8 inch stick out. That's a 43% increase. One implication is increased stick out can be used to increase the metal deposition rate for a given amperage. But that has a very important consequence. 
not just the wire deposition rate, but penetration is affected by increases in stick out. For our purposes, penetration is a measure from the top of the plate to the bottom of the weld nugget, measured in a cross section after welding. This penetration equation was developed by a friend and past president of the American Welding Society, Professor Clarence Jackson. He examined literally thousands of welds to define this relationship. Note the most powerful parameter increasing penetration is amps, which is multiplied by a power of 4, versus increasing travel speed, which is in the denominator. That intuitively we can understand will decrease penetration. Putting in values for a weld made with 035 inch diameter wire welding at 200 amps, 23 volts, and traveling 10 inches a minute results in a penetration value of 0.127 inches. Keeping the wire feed speed the same and increasing the stick out from 3 eighths to a half inch and using the melting rate equation we find the amperage reduces to 184 amps. This reduces penetration to 0.114 inches or 11 percent. Increasing the stick out from 3 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch reduces amperage to 162, decreasing penetration 24 percent. If the stick out is allowed to increase to 7 8 inches, the amperage reduces to 154, which reduces penetration almost 30 percent. There are a number of other things that can be done with these equations, but it's much easier if a computer spreadsheet is used to make the calculations. See the second part of this topic presented in a video, Deposition and Penetration Spreadsheet, to show you how it's done. For more information on welding math and science, and to see our innovative, patented, and inexpensive MIG shielding gas saver system that improves weld starts and typically cuts shielding gas use in half, visit our website, www.netwelding.com. Thank you.